Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So we're on hadith number six from the missing missing lessons of the daily hadith. Is that what we call it? The missing lessons? All right. So this is called patience during tribulations. So you see hadith number five, hadith number six, and hadith number seven. They all in regards to this type of patience and how we should deal with uh fitna, tribulations, trials, and uh, hard times. So this is what we're going to see from Anas radhiyallahu anhu. He said, "Qala marra an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi imra'atin tabqi 'inda qabr. Fa qalat taqi Allah wa sabri. Fa qalat ilayka anni fa innaka lam tusab bi musibati wa lam ta'rifu. Fa qila laha innahu an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa atat bab an-nabiy fa lam tajid 'indahu bawwabin. Fa qalat lam a'rifuk." فَقَالَ إِنَّمَا صَبْرُ عِنْدَ صَدْمَةِ الْأُولَى مُتَفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ So here Anas عنه, he reported that the Prophet وسلم, he passed by a woman and she was crying at a grave. All right, she was crying at a grave. And then the Prophet وسلم, said to her اِتَّقِ لَهَا وَاسْبِرِي Now there are some of the ulama of hadith they use this hadith to show the permissibility of the woman visiting the graves as long as she remains in the what? And in the, in the manners of visiting the grave, like she's not, you know, crying and yelling and ripping her clothes off and going crazy. But as long as she remains, they, they use this hadith to show the permissibility and Allah knows best. But that's an issue for another day. That's an issue for Baluga Muram, inshallah. But he said to her, he said, Taqilaha wasbiri. He said, you know, fear Allah, you know, remain in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasbiri. And be patient. Because obviously she had lost her child, you know, and she's crying at the grave. She's going through a very difficult time. So for call it Ilayka Anni, she told the Prophet she didn't know who he was. She said, basically, get away from me. You know, for because you haven't been afflicted with what I've been afflicted with. Nor do you know what I've been afflicted with. So you know, for, so the Prophet left. And then the people said to her, فَقِيلَ لَهَا إِنَّهُ النَّبِي They said to her, that was the Prophet. And she, oh. So she goes to the house of the Prophet. فَأَتَتْ بَابِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ So she went to the, the door of the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فَلَمْ تَجِدْ إِنَّهُ بَوَّابِينَ And she didn't find anybody on the door, like, you know, like as a guard. So she just, she went in, like, the door, I guess, is open. Who knows, because it does, it's not clear. But she didn't find anybody at the door. So she went in. فَقَالَ لَمْ عَرَفْكَ she said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said, I didn't know you. I didn't know that was you. فَقَالَ إِنَّمَا صَبْرُ عِنْدَ صَدْمَةِ الْأُولَى And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told her, the best of advice, he said, إِنَّمَا صَبْرُ عِنْدَ صَدْمَةِ A sadma is what? That crashing. You know when you get that first news, that pain, like it just hits you, you know, because everything's fine. You're not thinking, you know, like if it's a death of somebody, you know, that you that you know, and then you get that call or somebody comes to your house and gives you that or, you know, or you come to the masjid and you find out that first time that you hear it, it's a sodma. It's like a like something that crashed into you where it's like, what? You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't you know, you have to sit back. And so that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said at that time of that sodma, when that when that news hits you. He said, that's when the patience is the, you know, that's now where you have to be the most patient. This is where patience is the most applicable because this is the time when the people, they won't know how to handle it. So some people, they're going to take the news and say, you know, the, you know they hear, hear the news, you know, maybe it's his father, maybe it's his mother or something. And he says, he went, ilayhi raji. and he remembers the dhikr, he goes back and remembers Allah and he reminds himself to be patient. You know, and then, you know, goes and deals with everything in a, in a proper manner. It's not saying that you don't have to cry. You could cry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hold you accountable for the tears that you cry out of the loss of a loved one. But hold you to accountable for what? That. <laughs> that thing right there, your tongue. You know, he holds you to accountable what you say in that time when you're not being patient. You know, because, I mean, obviously, you know, certain things of emotions are not controllable, like tears coming out your eyes, but you do control your behavior and you control the things that you say, you know? So like, for example, you hear like, you know, your friend died and you come up in here and start flipping over tables and going crazy. No, that's, that's, that's not sober. 
That's foolishness, you know. And none of that stuff that you're doing and all that relieving of the emotion is going to change the situation. When those types of situations come with, you need to just deal with it. Deal with it. And, and handle it with patience. Because there's nothing that you can do to change that situation. It's done. It's over. It's colossal. It's what Allah has written. And you have to accept that. Uh, uh, however hard it is, but you have to accept it. So, Allah must die. So, inshallah, may Allah make us from the from the people of patience whenever we're afflicted with tribulations. Allah must die. 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 All